Okay, so we're in module five uh, of third edition, nine of second, on your own five four. It says determine the shape and bond angle of an oxygen molecule. So we have to first of all draw a good Lewis structure. An oxygen molecule, we know it's going to be a single bonded, or excuse me, we'll start with a single bond. Let's go ahead and start, let's start from the first part. Let's go ahead and draw a Lewis structure for each of these oxygen atoms, okay? How many valence electrons does oxygen have? All right, see the periodic table over there? It's a 6A element, so it has six. We build up the Lewis by going around. There's four, five, and six. We already have one open oriented towards the other element. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it that way. I'm going to just do the same thing, but leave an address in this direction. I'm going to do that by this way. So there we have two oxygen atoms in proximity to one another. We've oriented an open address or a single electron on each, whichever every way you look at it. Now we're going to bond these two together. We know that this is a homonuclear diatomic, right? So we know that they're going to come together and form a bond between each other some way. If we make just one shared electron pair, now it's two, four, five, six, seven, and seven. That doesn't satisfy. We need to bring another electron pair over, double bond, and now each oxygen atom sees eight electrons in its valence shell. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Eight and eight. This is, now determine the shape and the bond angle of an oxygen molecule. This is one of the simplest ones because we only have two atoms, right? Anytime we only have two atoms bonded to one another, the angle is always going to be 180 degrees. It's a straight, or it's a linear molecule. There is no pivot atom in this situation, right? There's nothing to form angles around. It's just two of them bonded with one another. So this molecule, in whatever orientation it is, is always going to be two things connected to one another in a straight line, a linear molecule. Now, if we had three, we would have to show that it would fall out in symmetry as three with a pivot element in the middle and 100 degree angle on both sides. But for only two, this is a linear A linear shape, and a linear shape has the angle of 180 degrees. So any questions on 5-4, determining the shape and bond angle of an oxygen molecule? I believe he's told me yesterday, pardon? If we did, and again, where we're at right now, I would accept this as your three, you know, this is your two-dimensional Lewis structure. Technically, on the diagonal was where they'd be because you've got all of these pairs and bonds trying to repel each other to the greatest extent possible. And so they would physically move in that kind of a shape. So this would be this would be your two dimensional, and this would be your three D. So this is your two D Lewis, and this is your three three D Vesper. No, no, don't worry about that. Just to show in some way that the you know the electrons have repelled one another and are moving away. But the question was, what's the shape? Either way, it's linear. And what's the angle? Either way, it's 180 degrees. So you just say linear 180. It doesn't even ask you to necessarily show the, the diagram. Now, if you got the numbers wrong, but you showed me this on paper, you know, there'd be points for that because you presented it right. You just communicated it wrong. What is the shape and bond angle of a CHCl3 molecule? CHCl3. So we have three different elements at play here. Carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. Let's go ahead and draw the Lewis structure for each individual atom. Carbon, how many valence electrons? Has four. 
So they're going to play out on all the cardinal positions. We've got hydrogen has one and chlorine that has seven, right? right so chlorine has four, hydrogen has two, and chlorine, carbon has four, hydrogen has one, and chlorine has seven. Yeah, there we go. So of, of these three elements, which one has the most open locations around them? Carbon does, right? Remember, hydrogen only has one, but it only is looking for two, so because it's the exception. Everybody else up here is looking for eight. So chlorine only has one available, but carbon has four. So carbon is going to be our central element. It has four connecting points around it. I'm going to go through now and say, well, we have carbon has one hydrogen and three chlorines. Those are our four connectors, right? Every one of these is looking for one additional electron. Hydrogen is looking for one more. Chlorine is looking for one more. So we can bond them together by So I've taken those elements and I've placed them around my central atom, my pivot atom, and put their open addresses towards one another, which is another way of saying putting their lone electrons towards one another. And then I go ahead and share them up. So as each atom is looking out from them, at, at how many electrons do they own, air quotes, own, how many does hydrogen see that it owns? Two. Is it satisfied? Yes. Chlorine sees eight, and it's satisfied. Every chlorine sees eight, and they're satisfied. The carbon, what does carbon see? One, two, three, four pairs, so that's eight. Carbon satisfied. So every element here has satisfied their octet rule. So this would be a correct Lewis structure. of CHCl3. Okay. Doesn't have to be. No. Doesn't have to be, but it has to be. Um, in this case, it does have to be one of the four nodes. And the angles need to approximate a 90 degree. No, this is just my addition to show you that those are 90 degree angles on a two degree or two dimensional Lewis structure showing your four, connecting, your four connecting atoms to the central pivot atom. Okay, so, but now that we have an appropriate Lewis structure, let me go ahead and make some room here, and now we're going to go ahead and draw the three-dimensional Vesper shape. So the first thing to do is look at the central atom and say how many things those things are going to be either electron pairs or bonded relationships. How many does this carbon have? It has four of them, right? It has four of them, and as a matter of fact, all four of them are bonds. And so the very first shape that we learned applies here. You've got four connections, and they're four bonds. There's no unbonded pairs. So you can see right here that the shape is going to be symmetrical. It's going to be symmetrical with four connection points. And when I taught you the very first part with, car with a central atom, the pivot atom, if it was in two dimensions, equally apart would be 90 degrees. But in three dimensions, what does equally apart become? 109 degrees, right? So as you look and see four connections and it's four bonds, we are going to be drawing a tetrahedral. So we're going to have the central atom, carbon, we're going to have we're going to depict two of these bonds as being in the plane of the board okay and what that is showing here is that these two if you pick the 12 o'clock and three o'clock bond if you had your little tetrahedral manipulative if you lay them in your hand and you put those two against your hand they would lay flush in the plane of the board so this part of the molecule we're not done this part of the molecule that we've just drawn is the part that we can actually kind of present in two dimensions 
because these lay in a plain. But we know that the last two are going to be outside of that plain. One of them is going to be drawn forward, and one of them is going to be back into the board in a three-dimensional view. So since we have four, we can just go ahead and just memorize the fact that it looks like this. What these two different shapes, or these two different symbols um, try to communicate is this dotted or dashed line is that bond which is back into the board, and this triangular shape is showing that that bond is coming forward out of the board. And that's how we get our three-dimensional presentation on a two-dimensional space. Well, the two that are lacking are two more chlorines. And so this is the Vesper. <coughs> the Vesper shape or the, ve the molecular geometry, the Vesper shape for CHCl3. Bond angles here are 109 degrees. I know in Tyler's video he used 109.5. We're just going to round it to 109 for in here. Okay, so 109 degrees. And it may not look it, because my, my dimensions might be off a little bit, but remember, we're drawing a three-dimensional shape in two-dimensional space. So we need things to, to cue our brains that something different is happening here. So when you see this dashed, it means it's behind. When you see this triangle, or this triangle shape, it means it's forward. And hopefully you can see in your hand that little tetrahedral shape I just, you know, we passed around the other day. And a tetrahedral has 109 degree bond angles. We talk about the bond angles, remember that's the angle between the bonds, and so when we have an unbonded pair, it's not the angle between the unbonded pair and a bond, it's always the angle between one bond and another bond. Yes, sir? You may. Mm -hmm. yep. Any questions on Vesper or Lewis for the CHCl3 molecule? Does it make sense? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. So you're, there's not going to be a unique angle for a particular molecule. Once you determine the Vesper shape, it has an associated angle. So every tetrahedral is 109. Okay? Every trigonal pyramidal is going to be 107. Every, you know, bent is going to be 105, you know, there's an angular bent too, which is 116 based on the trigonal. We didn't cover that in our class. He added one more shape that we didn't cover. So, but every time you see that shape, you know, first of all, to see the Lewis. Second of all, to imagine the shape it's going to be. Third is to draw that shape and then add the associated standard angle to it. For those of you that have second edition, when I'm done with this, we'll go through and the ones that you have that are different from here, we'll cover those as well, all right? So, five, six, what is a shape and bond angle? What are possessed by an arsenic trichloride molecule? Arsenic trichloride. Okay, so what are the elements that are in play? Arsenic. Abbreviated, I don't remember, is it AR? AS. What is AR then? Anyway. Oh, <laughs> duh. Okay, AS, AS. Where are we at on the periodic table? AS, 33. It is a 5A. AS. So it's a 5A element. So its Lewis structure has 5, and I'm going to go ahead because I'm Smarter than the average bear. No, not really. But I've just done this enough that I know that uh, this, this kind of orientation is going to help us. Basically, you just need to put five around it. A pair and then three singles. Trichloride. Covalent molecule, remember? So we've got the, tri the uh, covalent naming paradigm in play. A chloride is a chlorine ion. So we're going to have, we need chlorine to be in play, right? And how many of them? 
three of them. Okay. Well, when chlorine is in its neutral form, it has how many valence electrons? Seven of them. It's a 7A element. I just kind of previewed it by orienting its open, open address, or another way to look at it, orienting its single electron towards the one it's going to share with. We know it's going to share with arsenic. The fact that arsenic has three available locations and chlorine only has one available location lets us know that arsenic is going to be our pivot atom, our central atom, in whatever shape. Also, just natural symmetry tells you that, right? If I've got one of, if I've got one of these and three of these, what's going to be in the middle? It's going to form a nice symmetric shape. So we're going to distribute the thing we have three of around the thing we have one of. Now, that's not always the case, but vast majority of times it is. So still look at it and say, three available, one available, this is my central atom. I'm going to go ahead and leave it up here and know that this pair is already satisfied. We're looking for three connections. We have three chlorines, and I'm going to assume that those three are going to be bonded right here. So th there is the Lewis structure without the bonds, just showing the original electrons, the valence shell, with the single unbonded electrons towards each other. And I'm going to go through and replace each pair and represent them as being a bonded pair. And so now each chlorine you should see has 2, 4, 6, 8, 8, 8, 8. Arsenic in the center has 2, 4, 6, 8. So the octet rule has been satisfied for all the elements in that structure. So this is the two-dimensional Lewis structure for arsenic trichloride. Now we're going to go over and draw the three-dimensional Lewis or Vesper diagram for this molecule. Now the way I encourage you to think about this and the way I, I went through it, you know, the, the video we watched went from a basic molecule and built to more complexity. I started with the most complex and built down to the simplest because this one here, even though it only has three connecting points or three atoms that it's connected with, how many, quote, things does it have around the central atom? Has four things. Has three bonds and an unbonded pair. And when your central atom has four things connected to it, the shape you're going to draw is based upon a tetrahedral. It doesn't mean it is a tetrahedral. It's only a tetrahedral if it has four bonded pairs. It's not four bonded pairs. It's only three bonded pairs. But the shape is going to be based on a tetrahedral. So we know that we would have been starting, if we had a tetrahedral, let's pretend that we had an AS4 molecule, which we're not going to say it exists. We're just going to say if, hypothetically, we had. Let me start again. I started drawing it in two-dimensional. We draw the three-dimensional Vesper for a tetrahedral that has a AS, arsenic, and chlorine in it. Now, do you agree that if there was such a thing as an ASCl4 molecule, it would look like this? Okay, If there were. There, I'm not saying there is. I'm just saying if there were, we would draw this as a tetrahedral with its four connecting points. And we would say, oh, the bond angle here, the angle between any one of these bonds is going to be 109 degrees. That's like the one we just did. But in this case, it's not actually four bonded, four bond. Uh, four bonds. It's actually three bonds and an unbonded pair. So let's take this and modify it and put the unbonded pair up there. And then with the unbonded pair up there, what does that do to the angle of the other bonds? Makes it a little smaller because the unbonded pair repels the other bonded pairs more than a bonded pair would. So when you replace a bonded pair with an unbonded pair, it squeezes the other ones closer together and we've said that this reduces down to 107 degrees. And this shape right here, and again, when you start drawing it, you're going to get excited because you're going to recognize it even before you have a chance to write it down, <laughs> that what is the shape that you see here? It's a pyramidal. Or as the video described it, he said it was a triangular pyramidal. But for our purposes, just this is a pyramidal. And the example I've used all the time, and it helps, is 
This is a tripod with a camera on top, just like over here. Okay, Three legs and something attached to the top. It's a tripod. That's how I remember it. It's a tripod. It's a pyramidal. So that's the Vesper for ASCL3, and this is the Lewis for ASCL3. Questions? Because once you draw a good Lewis diagram, and you have to be able to draw a good Lewis structure. If you can't draw a good Lewis structure, it's doubtful you'll get a good Vesper. But if you have a solid Lewis, once you see the way each of these look, I mean, this could be element A, B, and if it's drawn this way, I know it's going to be a pyramidal. It's just a matter of taking the time to actually draw it out and put the angles in there. Because every single element, or every single compound you look at that has a single bond like this, or even a double bond in there, because remember, we, we treat singles and doubles as the same. It's just a bond in terms of the geometry. But the unbonded pair up on the top, every one of them is going to look like that. Determine the shape and bond angle of sulfur dibromide. So we have sulfur and what's the other element? Bromide is, is an ion of the bromine. A bromine ion is bromide, so it's bromine, sulfur. So you consider the original elements, sulfur and bromine. Sulfur, look at the periodic table, falls out as a 6A. So it has six valence electrons. draw it that way to keep an open address towards my other element. Dibromide, okay, so to, two bromines, and bromine is a 7A, so it has one open. Here's my single unbonded electron, and this could be bromine, it could be chlorine, it could be any other 7A element, and the shape would be the same. This is sulfur at 6, it could be oxygen, it could be any other column six element and the shape would be the same of what we're going to draw. Okay. See two unbonded, one unbonded. This is going to be my central. Also symmetry, one and two. Two around the one, not split. Okay. But in either case, two open addresses or two unbonded electrons, one open address or one uh, open address. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually just move it closer together. I'm going to slide this one over so we can see this a little bit better. And have a pair there. I can put the other unbonded pair anywhere to, for shape-wise. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the unbonded down. Or for symmetry in my two-dimensional, I'm going to put it here. So my two-dimensional Lewis structure, going for symmetry in two dimensions, is a sulfur in the center with two bromine attached at either end. I've got two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's like everybody's octet is full. And symmetry-wise, it lays out this way. Now, what does it look like in three dimensions? Well, the thing that's going to change is not how we draw. You can't draw this as flat because, see, we've got two unbonded pairs in the center. So we're kind of going back to what I said before. How many things are around the central atom? Four. And because it's four things around the central atom, the shape is based on a tetrahedron. But it's not four bonds. It's only two bonds. And so the way we're going to represent this in three dimensions is like a tetrahedron, let's say that we had bromine and bromine, 
We just started building up a tetrahedron. We did our first two. Our first two is bromine and bromine. What are our third and fourth things around the central atom? Well, they're the unbonded, or excuse me, they're the bonded pairs. So we're going to show the bonded pairs as being here and here. They're not, if we had a model here, a three-dimensional model, like was on the video, they wouldn't be flush in this plane. They would be set back and set forward, but we're not going to do some kind of little, you know, a little dot back here and a little triangle here because it's going to get too confusing. Realize that these are not laying in a plane. They're actually oriented themselves around, but they're not 109 degrees apart, which would be a tetrahedral, and they're not 107 degrees apart because that would be the pyramidal, the triangle of uh, trigonal pyramidal because that would require three bonds in an unbonded pair. This is two unbonded and two bonds. And so this was our 105 degree bent. The angle between here is 105 degrees and it is a <coughs> bent molecule. So sulfur dibromide, here's the Lewis and there is the Vesper shape. If you have two 7A elements bonded with a single 6A element, you're going to end up with this shape, this geometry. 